Welcome back to Squawk Box this morning. New York's Governor Andrew Cuomo saying that five regions around the state will be allowed to start a phased reopening of their economies today. That doesn't include New York City. In Connecticut, the reopening is set to begin next Wednesday. And joining us right now is Connecticut's Governor, uh, Ned Lamont. Uh, Governor, thank you for joining us and uh, thank you for hosting me in your great state. Um, we, we appreciate everything you're trying to do here. Um, in terms of the reopening, let's just talk about the phases and let's talk about what numbers you're going to be looking for and what's going to be required of companies that are reopening. Well, uh, good morning, everybody. I'll tell you, I just heard your last bit. It's worth noting that uh, Connecticut will be hosting um, the Travelers Golf Championship at the end of uh, June. Uh, that at Cromwell, Connecticut, the Seminole of New England, uh, that'll not be in front of a uh, real audience, but in front of a TV audience. So That's these good. are all the baby steps we have as we get back. But to your question, look, our metrics are going in the right direction, as you've heard from others. Um, that's hospitalization is really key because that speaks to the capacity of our system. And we're getting our testing and our track and trace up to speed uh, very quickly. We'll be doing over 42,000 tests a week next week. And that means that we can open up for outdoor dining only, just outdoor. You're 90 percent less likely to get infected outdoors than indoors. And doing a little bit with some of the hair salons as well and some of the Main Street retail. And in terms of what, what's the next step after that? So we take a look. We'll see. We'll have two or three weeks. We'll see whether people uh, followed the social protocols, whether at the restaurant, you know, waiters were wearing masks and gloves. They were sanitizing between meals six feet apart. And if it looked like it was working pretty well, June 20th would be our uh, next phase. And we'd uh, think about what we do from there. Can we talk about uh, the budget in, in the state of Connecticut, and it's, it's going to become an issue if it isn't an issue already, not just in Connecticut, but in, in New York, in New Jersey, uh, specifically around the tri-state area. But it's, it's going to be a, a problem for states and municipalities around the country. Um, what needs to happen here? What's the fair, fair way to deal with this? So um, what the feds have done is they've reimbursed us for COVID-related expenses, which was very helpful, I got to say. But if I have, we were in good shape. We had a balanced budget. This thing hit, and all in the last three months, we're now looking at a $1 billion uh, deficit in this fiscal year, which ends on June 30. And 90% of that is related to the fact that not just income tax is uh, almost disappeared, but sales tax took a whack. Usually sales tax is a little more stable, but because we shut down the service-related piece of our economy on the strong recommendation of the feds, um, that has taken a hit. So... Uh, we're in much better shape, I think, than a lot of our peers. We've got a good rainy day fund, but I think the states are going to be incredible lodestone on economic recovery unless they get some help to make up some of that revenue shortfall. And, and what are you projecting out longer term? Because clearly there's been this, these stay-at-home orders have obviously uh, had a demonstrable impact on revenue to the state, but I think there's larger questions longer term not just about the next month or two, but over the next 12, 18, 24 months as to what the economies look like in some of these states, given maybe not stay-at-home orders, but social distancing requirements, uh, people who are laid off who may not be getting back to work, um, anxiety just about the people's own station and economic station in life, and therefore what they do when it comes to spending. Yeah, we are. Our budget calls for a gradual uh, coming back uh, towards the first quarter of the next calendar year. And we will see. I mean, I got Pratt and Whitney. We make jet engines. The military piece of their business is uh, is strong. The commercial piece of the jet engine business, not. Let's face it. I think that could take a little bit uh, of time to come back. How fast will people come back to restaurants? Uh, you know, you look at Georgia. They've been sort of the canary in the coal mine. Um, you know, the good news is you haven't seen a lot of spikes. The bad news is um, people are heading back very slowly, so it hasn't made much impact on the economy at this point. And I think that example is probably what we should plan for here in Connecticut. People will come back cautiously. We've talked a lot about the future of work, and one of the things that people do talk about is people getting out of the cities, people, people going uh, to the suburbs. Uh, and whether there's going to be a, effectively a reverse trend. 
and, and how that works. Does that benefit Connecticut? Um, if, if, New York, if New York City is not as strong as it, as it used to be, uh, what does that really mean, given that there's still a huge commuter uh, uh, portion of, of, of the tax base of, of people in Connecticut? Well, look, I love New York City. I think it's the global capital of the world, and Connecticut, Southern Connecticut, has benefited by being part of that same ecosystem. But there's no question about it. Phones are ringing off the hook at real estate offices all throughout Southern Connecticut. Uh, people are realizing that telecommuting doesn't mean you have to be in New York City uh, five days a week. It means that if you have to uh, stay home for a period of time, having a nice little backyard is not a bad way to do it. So I think uh, people will be taking a second look at Connecticut because uh, it has some real advantages here.